Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Good Drum Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, um, before we start, uh, congratulations to the New England Patriots for winning the big one last night, Super Bowl 49. It was, uh, if you're into that kind of thing, then and maybe you watched the game. It was a, it was a close one, but I think, uh, I think we deserved the victory in the end, shall we say? Anyway, enough about that. Um, probably would have been apt to actually do uh, an episode of the show on American whiskey, I suppose, to go with, uh, with the uh, overall American theme of the of the weekend. But um, no, we're not. We're looking at one of my favourite distilleries. Um, certainly. Uh, I guess it would rank in uh, in the top ten of my my favourite distilleries, and uh, that's Springbank. And um, we're looking at Springbank. I mean, I've done obviously an episode on the show uh, a while ago uh, on uh, on the distillery, but uh, we're looking at two of the brand new releases from the distillery. The uh, um, the current in the range of twelve year old cast strength bottlings and a new bottling. Um, which is the 17 year old uh, cast strength bottling again aged in sherry cask don't know what the bottling is going to look like so hence the image on the uh, um, the um, opening title title picture um, it was just a, a complete guess as to what it's going to look like so I've got no idea but obviously quite alcoholic but it's got a lovely sweetness some barley, some biscuity notes, just a little bit of off the still oiliness, but really sweet. I mean, um, last time I tasted a new make that was quite as sweet was the Glen Glasso um, new make, which was a little bit softer. This has got a bit more of an edge to it, and um, nice smoky aftertaste. The peat is probably more prevalent on the palate than it was on the nose. Um, but that is that's really very very good. I'm going to put a little drop of water with it and uh, see how it goes with that.
not a great deal of changes. Flattened it a little bit, to be honest with you. Getting more of the oils, um, which I'm not surprised about, to be honest with you. And this is why this stuff is not released and bottled at 40%. Um, or thereabouts, shall we say. Probably a little bit more smoky now, in actual fact. As the, the fruit is kind of like subdued a little bit. Again, a lot sweeter on the palate. I'm getting some crystallised tangerine and orange. Mm. Again, quite dry, um, dusty. Um, but the peat has got a more dusty kind of character to it. Um, but yeah, that's that's really nice. That's so that's kind of like you know the uh, the DNA, should we say, of, of Springbank, and um, just goes to show that the, the spirit is very very good. Not that you needed telling that but it's always nice to sort of like taste it without any other character uh, at all and it just goes to show how, how good the spirit is coming off the stills of Springbank so hmm. okay so on to the Hazelburn 12 year old uh, again um, aged in um, cherry cast let's, let's see what this gives us Got a lovely dusty violety nose. Some quite subtle sherry notes. It's obviously not aged, I would guess, in first fill uh, sherry cast. It's probably refill. And it just adds just a sort of a light sherry fruit note. Quite elegant. With a touch of boiled sweets. It's got that slight sort of Okantoshin y sort of character. Maybe not quite as, as boiled sweety as. It's got some lovely barley and some dusty, dusty spices. Mmm. That is, that is very, very good spirit. And a lot of people kind of, not necessarily overlook Hazelburn. They just don't think of it. You know, they, they, they know Long Row, they know Springbank itself. Um, but a lot of people don't tend to, to know about Hazelburn. And it is a fantastic whiskey. It is very good. Nice complexity again, nice sweetness. Not overly salty, there's a little bit, but not a huge amount. A little bit of violety notes. Um, hmm. Palette. Candied almonds and again gentle sherry, almost coal smoke. I mean, I know it's not peated, but it just has that on the aftertaste that almost kind of coal smoke kind of character. Lots of barley, um, soft fruit, easy going, bit of spice. Oh God, it's a lovely time. Mm, caramel, just a smidging of caramel. That's, that's really very, very good. And it's got elegance um, and a little bit of saltiness. Yeah, that's, that's really good spirit. Right, okay, so on to the 10-year-old Springbank. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Denser. It's got a nice kind of perfumed character to it. Not... Get yeah, some violet, some, some apricot. A little bit of fishiness, some salinity. A little bit, just a smidgen of sherry cars, because again, as they tend to do, the 10 year old tends to see a little bit of sherry cars, but as they go up the age statements to sort of like, you know, uh, 15, 18, 21, etc. More sherry cask seems to uh, get used in the uh, in the vatting for those uh, particular bottlings. So you're getting the fleshy fruit that we found in the new make. You're getting some rich fruit, a touch of dried fruit. Like I said, a little bit of fishiness, a little bit of peat, not a huge amount. I'm guessing that 
being relatively sort of gently peated, a lot of the other flavours are sort of coming over the top, shall we say, of the, of the peated character. Um, and again, it's got that classic, almost slightly gritty sherry character, which I often find with Springbank. It's not a sort of a Macallan-esque, soft kind of sherry. Um, it has an edge to it, a sort of a grittiness, a sort of a tannic um, quality, which is, is quite distinctive. Oh. Nice bit of peat on the fade there. Soft, oily, lightly oiled, barley, quite a bit of salt, certainly on the aftertaste. Um, soft fruit, little, little, little bit fleshy, um, a little bit of violets, a little bit of sherry, a little bit of sort of coffee uh, and tannin. Mm, I mean, that's just a lovely whiskey. Um, just. Just like I said, I think the ten-year-old. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's just the way the thing has evolved. But it certainly, seems to be um, less immature um, and less all over the place in in reality. From you know, if I remember back sort of six, seven odd years ago, um, I certainly wouldn't have uh, raved about it quite so highly. But I think nowadays a ten-year-old is is you know, a really good bottling in its own right. So yeah, really nice. Okay, and on to the first of the two new releases, um, the 12 year old cast strength bottled at um, 53.2, quite interesting that the, the 12 year old was bottled at 53.2 and the 17 is 52.3, hmm. sure that's just coincidental but uh, yeah, interesting, let's see what the nose gives us. Now it's sort of like being, now the cast strength, the, the additional alcohol just seems to give it more intensity off the bat. I'm getting more sherry, but again, like I was saying, it's that gritty, slightly tannic, coffee sherry. Some fruit, some oils, a little bit of peat, some spices. It's a bit. It's a bit of a. Dare I say, a little bit of a cheesiness to it. Um, Yeah, it's 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 got a sort of yeah, a little bit of a cheesiness, but but again, it's it's that slightly sort of more amplified sort of sherry cask that's coming through. Well. That's got a really dry aftertaste combination of the alcohol and the um, and the salt, but lingers really nicely. Again, quite peated on the on the finish. Um, again, it's the gritty coffee, sherry tannins, a um, little bit of fish oil, uh, some fruit, more mocha, more of that sort of coffee and tannin and um, type. Sherry cask, nice, it's good. Um, again, a little, possibly a little bit cheesy, but um, that's uh, the way it tends to go. Let's uh, see what a little drop of water does for it. Kind of quite mutes the nose. It has to be said. It's made it a lot oilier, a lot less expressive. Um, But it's clean, there's certainly no, no sulfur notes, um, no off notes. Yeah, it's it's more giving it a bit of time in the glass and it is becoming more like the, the, the ten year old.
softer, rounder, a little bit more caramel, uh, sort of toffee caramel coming through. Um, again, quite a dry finish, quite tannic, quite salty. Less peat, but more fishiness now on, I'm getting on the finish. So, um, so yeah, it's not, again, not a bad bottling. Um, personally, I think I favour the, the 10 year old a little bit more than I do the, the 12. Um, but yeah, still really good bottling. <laughs> Okay, and on to the, the second of the two new bottlings, the 17 year old uh, cask strength, again aged in sherry cask, so more sherry, um, again I'm guessing that if they've used a little bit of first fill possibly, um, but I imagine predominantly uh, refill sherry casks, it's got that, again that sort of slightly coffee gritty kind of character, but it's a lot rounder a lot softer in actual fact it's got a really nice balance between the sort of softness and the the, the, the sort of tannin some perfumed violets a little bit more perfumed than say in the 10 year old make more fishy a little bit more a little bit more salt some lovely dried fruit Mm, it's got a lovely intensity again, sort of a touch of barley and some sweetness uh, coming through. But again, it's that classic sort of oily, oily tannins fish. Mm, lovely, really very very good nose palate. Oh. It's got a lovely finish, really intense, really coffeed, and again a lovely sort of again balance between the sort of the softer, rounder sherry notes and the the sort of coffee tannin grittier notes. A little bit of peat on the aftertaste, um, plenty of salt again, as you would expect from from Springbank. Uh, touch of violets. Oh, it's just got a lovely intensity. Uh, I don't think you need to put any water with that whatsoever. That's just got mm, just so so well balanced. Really, very very good. Like that. That's right. Okay. And so finally, let's look at the long row. Now, um, I had tasted this on on a couple of occasions before the the no age statement bottling, and uh, I tasted it for last year's World Whiskey Awards, and I remember thinking it was actually had quite a lot of maturity to uh, maybe the sort of first bottling they did of it had a lot more older spirit than it did younger spirit um, but sort of when I tasted it blind I mean I kind of well I knew it was long road because I was obviously tasting the Campbelltown samples and so um, peated sort of uh, Campbelltown well I mean yes you've got Glen Scotia but uh, um, it just said kind of yeah, Springbank uh, to me quite uh, quite easily. Um, so let's uh, let's see if this uh, this particular bottling is uh, is um, got the same level of maturity. Then shall we? No is the honest answer, but that's not that's not detracting from the spirit. It's actually quite estery. It's got a lot of barley, some almost bananary apricot, citrus. I mean, whoa, I mean, this is, it's very different. Um, obviously, I'm, well, if I'm guessing this is probably all American oak. Um, it's got a real intensity, a lovely peatiness, but not an overt peatiness. It's got a dry, slightly herbal peat note. Really expressive, and like I say, that, it certainly doesn't, seem to have as much older spirit in as I remember it uh, from um, the sample I tasted but that is lovely, that is a really nice nose. Yeah, lovely intensity, nice amount of peat, some good fruit, some 
not a great deal of wood notes, a little bit of vanilla in the background, but it's obviously good wood. Um, hmm. Pub. Whoa. Now that has got a peated finish. And the peat does all just seem to come through on the finish with that sort of dusty, slightly coal dust, peat dust um, kind of character. Again, it's got a lovely balance. There's a little bit more oak on the palette, a little bit more vanilla, a little bit more um, toffee, but not too much. Again, it's got some nice fruit, some barley, um, some light fishiness, uh, which you expect um, and like I said the peak coming through on the finish just kind of it's just got a nice kind of progression shall we say um, it's uh, not a monster bite by any uh, any stretch of the imagination even though it's bottled at sort of uh, or peated to 50, 50 parts uh, per million um, it's just really nicely balanced it's a, a lovely malt so um, so yeah a really nice one to finish off and I'm quite impressed with that Right, okay, so let's set some of this little tasting up. Well, six, I think, really quite quite interesting and um, rather, rather pleasant whiskies. The new make, obviously showing the, the, the DNA of, of, of Springbank, um, and quite a sweet kind of character, which sort of comes through on some of the bottlings, but I think it's, like a lot of things, sort of the peat and the sweetness sort of like seems to sort of get overlaid by um, the wood, uh, certainly. Hazelburn 12 year old, uh, really very good. For a triple distilled malt, it has that sort of triple distilled character, that slight boiled sweet kind of character, which I often find with triple distilled whiskies, uh, certainly Scottish whiskies, not there's very many of them, but um, really very, very nice. Nice maturity, really nice balance. Um, definitely one that I think you should uh, uh, look out for, especially if you like Ockentoshan, because I think it's certainly, uh, um, I think it's. I just think it's a better, better balanced whiskey than say something like the Alpentoshan 12. The Alpentoshan 12 just has too much sherry and not enough of anything else. So balance, very, very good. Ten-year-old Springbank. Well, like I was saying when we, when I was tasting it, I think um, I don't know whether it's me that's sort of getting more used to the style or whether it just has got less immature. Either way. Um, Certainly a really good go-to whiskey, uh, certainly at its price. Um, so, yeah, an absolute classic. 12-year-old car strength, well, I don't know what it is. I'm never really warm to the 12-year-old the, the, the car strength bottlings that uh, the Springbank have done. They've either been kind of like a bit too sherried, um, and this one, although not being too sherried, has a slight kind of... Slight cheesiness to it, a slight sort of, not sweaty sock, but we're kind of in that sort of kind of area. I mean, some people like that kind of rawness, I suppose. Uh, for me, I just personally preferred the the 10 year old. 17, um, yeah, I really like that. I thought that was very, very good. It's probably obviously not going to be as much as expensive as, say, something like the 18. I imagine it will sit obviously price wise between the 15 and the 18. Um, but it's obviously bottled at car strength, so it just has that little bit more intensity, a bit more sherry character, but again, you know, I think balanced really, really well. So, yeah, really impressed with that one. And um, I, I think whiskey of the tasting, personally, the, the long row, um, I think certainly bottling it without an age statement hasn't harmed it. And um, although obviously it doesn't have the maturity of, say, you know, some of the... Um, Long Row 18, which was you know fabulous bottling, um, and um, we actually still have some of that in stock. In actual fact, it does. They do do a bottling of it, uh, I think once a year, um, and um, but yeah, really, really impressed with that. It's a lovely peated malt, you know, and again, it's not particularly expensive, and you know, if you're after something peated that's not an island, is a little bit different, then certainly I think the Long Row is. Uh, it's worth looking at so um so yeah really nice so 
So there you have it, that's uh, this afternoon's slot tasting. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, again, I would like to say a big thank you to uh, the Springbank Distillery for sending me all these samples and, sp and especially sending me the new maker, which was uh, really, really good of them. So um, I guess all that's left to say is um, go and get some long road. Good afternoon and good driving.